Hi, everyone, and welcome to the special simulcast of the Neil Haley Show and the Love Is Podcast. I'm excited to welcome the host of the Love Is Podcast, Kim Sorrell. Kim, how are you? I know you're excited about our guest. I'm doing great. Thank you, Neil. And I am excited about our guest, Mike Tyhouse. I have got to say, I've been excited to talk to you. You have got the coolest job, I think, in the entire world. You, I don't know how you got started. It's a question that I have for you, but you are teaching and you are on TV and you are writing and you're doing all kinds of things. And you work so much with sharks that are the fascination of so many people. And Shark Fest is coming out, and it's just so exciting to see the things that you're figuring out and the things that you're finding. And so I want to, first of all, say welcome to the show. Uh, thank you so much for having me. You know, it's, it's great to be here and uh, always awesome to be talking sharks. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Okay, so I my first question is for you. When you were seven years old and they were graduating kids from second grade or whatever and saying, what are you going to be when you grow up? Did you say, I'm going to be the shark guy? I didn't say I'm going to be the shark guy, but I definitely said I'm going to be a marine biologist. I mean, I, I have wanted to be a marine biologist for as long as I can remember. You know, I got to watch you know, David Attenborough, Jacques Cousteau, and uh, you know, Eugenie Clark explore the oceans. And, you know, whenever I got to go to the beach as a kid, uh, growing up in the cornfields of Ohio, I just I just love the oceans and always wanted to be a marine biologist. And, uh, you know, I ended up getting to sharks kind of through the back door. Um, but, you know, here I am and you know, have spent more than 20 years working on these just incredible animals. And it's just such a pleasure to be able to share our adventures and the awesomeness of these animals uh, with the world through Shark Fest. And uh, it's it's just been a great experience. Now, did you think that shark week shark fest how crazy and popular this is this has become in the years you you, you got to be blown away uh i i have to admit i although i would have always said the animals are cool enough to support this kind of excitement i i never imagined it would have gotten to this level you know shark fest this year we've got a month of programming we did it last year too and uh you know, there's that much cool science going on, and we haven't even scratched the surface of all the, you know, really cool sharks and shark science out there. So we got plenty of material for years to come, too. Yeah, well, I know people who actually have parties around it. So it is huge. It is such a big thing, which I would think in your profession, you've got to just be thrilled that people are that infatuated and want to know so much more. I got to say that I saw uh, several clips of you, but one where you're leaning over a boat, you're leaning over the side of a boat and you've got whatever it is, a bag of shark food in your hand and you are two inches away from the great big jaws of a great white shark. How is it that you're that comfortable with sharks that you you seem completely fearless? Well, um, I am actually not completely fear, fearless. I actually think of myself as somewhat of a fraidy cat. In fact, when I snuck out as a kid and watched Jaws when I wasn't supposed to, I was afraid of the deep end of the pool for about three years. <laughs> um, and I, I've got that. But over 20 years of working with these animals and being able to observe their behavior, you're able to put yourself in situations and with teams of people that kind of know what they're doing and know how to respond uh, to the animals. And I think this is one of the big misconceptions of sharks. They're just kind of mindless killing machines. And, you know, sharks eating stuff is really impressive and cool. But, you know, most of the time they're actually kind of boring. And, you know, we, we just have to watch their behavior. And, you know, leaning over the side of the boat is one thing. I mean, some of my first times of like going down, and people are going to see this in Sharks versus Ross Edgley, going down with a, a pad of gel to get a shark to bite it because we need the impressions of their bite or to see how much they can bite off. And, you know, you're a couple hand widths away. I mean, that is very intense. But, you know, again, we only do it because we know the behavior of these animals. And in a lot of cases, we actually know those individual sharks and have a good sense of how they're going to behave. Now, you see, this is a great point you make is that you have to get the, the behavior of sharks, something that people just like any type of animal uh, the behavior is based on its environment. It's based on if they're, you know, concerned about things. What kind of makes sharks more uh, dangerous and aggressive? Well, yeah, some things that can make it more dangerous are things like murky water, where they can't really see what's going on. 
Um, or if you have lots of individual sharks in one spot and feeding starts happening because then they're kind of competing with each other to be the one to get the bite in. And so that's where it's not mindless killing machines, but just like the competition to get food. I mean, it's kind of like people, you know, you, you don't put out enough cookies and you got a lot of people there. There's going to be a different rush to that cookie plate than if it's a giant plate of cookies and only one person. And so you can get into those situations, but you know, just like, uh, people or animals, you can have the same individual act differently on different days and you don't really know why, but they'll give you cues like hunching their back and you know, okay, that's a shark that's getting irritated. It's time to get out of the water. So we always are watching those clues. And I think that's the cool thing on Shark Fest is that we're actually talking to the audience about some of these things we're seeing and the behaviors of these animals. Um, so they can really kind of learn about how they make their living as well. Yeah, very interesting. Well, and you know, you mentioned shark jaws, and I, I felt the same way. Like, I was very afraid to go into the swimming pool all by myself for several years, actually, after watching jaws. And um, even a little fearful, I have to admit, in the bathtub. And jaws actually chased, chased the sheriff's wife to the Bahamas. Like, some of the crazy stuff that has come out about sharks in movies with Sharknado and, and everything else. Do you think that helps what you're trying to teach people or hurts what you're trying to teach people or has no effect whatsoever? You know, I think it's changed through time. I mean, it, Jaws initially caused people to freak out and go kill sharks largely. So, you know, it was never the intention of, of the book and the movie, but, but it had that effect. But I think through time, you know, our sharks are a little campier now, um, which I personally appreciate. And I think people have now seen enough on you know, Shark Fest, and they've learned enough to know that, you know, these are movies, and, you know, sharks aren't out there with intent to bite people. I mean, accidents do happen, but really driving to the beach is usually going to be a lot more dangerous than getting in the water when it comes to sharks, at least. And so I think that that's helped, and we're starting to get the word out about how important sharks can be to having healthy oceans. And in some of our work, even shown that, you know, having sharks around can actually cause there to be more fish in an area. And so I think as people have learned that, you know, the impact of kind of the, the horror movies has been a lot less or basically it doesn't affect things at all. Well, thank goodness, because they can be fun, entertaining movies. So at time, so basically what you, the environment, such an important part of the behavior of the shark and what, but what caused a lots of shark attacks at this time of year? Is it the heat? Does it, do they get bothered by, uh, or is it more the population is all out? What are your thoughts on that? Well, one? Why we're having more... You, shark attacks right now, especially in Florida. I was talking to one of my clients about that. Yeah, really this time of year, it's all about how many people are in the water um, in a lot of places because, you know, when it's cold, nobody's in there. So we've got a lot more people in the water, but then we also have some of the sharks, they move further North along the coast as the water warms up because sharks kind of have their range of temperatures. They like to. Um, and so you just have kind of more random collisions. And the thing is, there are probably hundreds of thousands of times a year that big sharks that could do damage see people, maybe millions, and they just ignore us. So it's still a very, very rare occurrence. That doesn't minimize the effects that it has when something bad happens. But, you know, we, we can go to the beach and, you know, maybe don't swim in murky water. You know, watch for deep edges along sandbars where sharks might be funneled in. If you see bait fish or really if you see people fishing, you might want to avoid those areas. But, you know, for the most part, you can go to the beach and uh, you should be more worried about rip currents and other dangers at the beach. Well, you know, it's funny. One of the things that I tell myself when I'm at the beach is that we are not natural prey to sharks. If I'm wrong about that, please don't tell me because that's what keeps me uh, less fearful about going in the water, knowing that there are sharks around. But uh, I'm curious. So there's this, you you found like this new pocket of uh, great whites, right? off the coast near New York? Is that what's going on with that? Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing that we are starting to see some success of protecting these animals, which were virtually wiped out. And so, you know, we're starting to see some nurseries of great whites pop up around New York. And then, you know, especially around Cape Cod, where those seal populations are, there are times of the year where there are lots of white sharks there. So that's one of the few areas where you need to really pay attention to the local uh, advice because there are probably 
some particular beaches at certain times of the year that you don't want to swim because that's where white sharks are, are hunting for seals. And, and we are definitely not their natural prey, but, you know, mistakes do happen. And so, you know, in these very few areas around the country and the world where we know that they're really big sharks around, we want to stay out of their territory. Absolutely. We want to stay out of our territory. Well, Kim has a, uh, an interesting question. It seems like you definitely have love towards uh, covering sharks and what you do, but go ahead, Kim, with your question. Yeah. So um, Mike, I lived a year, I dedicated a year to figuring out the true meaning of love and the things I found out just blew my mind. And uh, to me, love is, is everything everywhere. It's got to be part of, of your, of your work, of your life, of, you know, the air that you breathe. And so I'm curious, as you decided to become a marine biologist, and then here you are this many years later, and they have done so much in your career and continue to do so much that's helping in so many great ways. Where does love play a role with it? I mean, I, I can't imagine you're uh, cuddling up to a great white, you know, in the evening or anything like that. But but there has to be, I would think, some sort of a, a love, compassion toward marine life and um so i'm just curious where does love play a role in all of this for you yeah well i mean i think what i say is i've just always loved the oceans i've loved being in the oceans around it i've just always been kind of fascinated and and i think compassionate about the animals that are in it um i mean i kind of started out my work on on dolphins and then got to sharks because of the interactions between sharks and dolphins which you can actually see or show on that on shark fest this year but you know, I've always that kind of always had that kind of inspiration, love of the oceans, and and that means that it kind of wraps up all those species in there, including the misunderstood ones. And I guess I've always had a soft spot for uh, for misunderstood that cuts across species and other things. And and so you know, I think there is that kind of you know deeper piece for me of of why I love doing this and you know trying to make a difference for oceans, which you know at the end of the day is also about making a difference for people too, because yeah, it doesn't matter where you are. Um, we rely on the oceans in different ways. And so, you know, I'd, I'd say that's been a big part of it for me. And, you know, one reason as well that uh, after doing this for more than 20 years, every time I'm out on the water, it's as exciting and as exhilarating as the first. And, you know, I hope that, you know, excitement comes through with everything we do on, on Shark Fest. And it, uh, you know, sparks some of that uh, love and passion in uh, people who are watching. All right, so check out Shark Fest. Best place to go where people can check it out? Well, uh, premieres Sunday on uh, Nat Geo, and then July 1st, all the shows drop on Disney Plus and Hulu. Appreciate it. Thanks again. Thank you. Have a great right, one. That's, that was the special simulcast of the Neil Haley Show and the Love is Podcast, guys. Take care.